Welcome to Good Samaritan United Methodist Church of Edina, where our vision is inspiring joyful faith, building a loving community, and serving neighbors near and far. This week, we are excited to welcome our new pastor, Rev. Max Richter. We're so glad you've joined us. This past week, Good Sam hosted Vacation Bible School. Here are a few highlights for this week's Children's Moment. I'm gonna walk, walk the road that you set before me. I'm gonna run, run the race that you've given me. And I'm gonna dance, dance, dance like nobody's watching. I will trust and follow you If you lead right, then right's where I'm going If you lead left, then I'm going to No matter where you may lead me I will trust and I'll 
Psalm 30, a song at the dedication of the Temple of David. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. A reading from Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came 
and when he saw him, fell at his feet and pleaded with him repeatedly. My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from a flow of blood for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better but grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, but if I touch his cloak, I will be made well. Immediately, her flow of blood stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my cloak? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the synagogue leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the synagogue leader, Do not be afraid, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the synagogue leader's house, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in to where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kom, which means little girl, get up. And, and immediately the girl stood up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Hello, Good Samaritan, and happy Pride Weekend to all of you. As we gather on this weekend, uh, on Sunday morning, there will be a whole group of our peers, our United Methodist siblings in Christ that are gathering downtown to march down to Loring Park to share God's unconditional love with the community. This last year, the, the people of Champlin and the people of New City Church in South Minneapolis partnered with Northeast in the Northeast part of town. We worked together to organize this witness for our shared uh, collaboration in the community. And there were 50 of us that were marching down Hennepin Avenue to show the Methodist love for our community. And I want to share a little bit about that experience with you. If you've never marched in the Pride Parade or attended it or attended the festival in Loring Park, there is just this immense and effervescent joy that radiates from the crowd, especially during that march. When there are hundreds of people, I don't even know how many hundreds, it seems like more and more each year, lining the sides of Hennepin Avenue down into the park, where you see these people that have so often been rejected by the church, or even demonized by the church, seeing representatives of the church showing the love of our local faith communities out in the wider community by bringing greetings and celebration from each of our church homes and families. And we would see the lesbian grandmothers with their grandkids in the strollers, the trans young adults in every color of the rainbow. We would see people of all ages that are gay, lesbian, bi, trans, queer, questioning. Some of them, as they would see us, bringing the greetings from the church with tears 
running down their eyes or shouting at the top of their lungs in gratitude or maybe both, recognizing that our church stands for love and justice and compassion, inclusion and joy. There's really nothing quite like it. And the pride crowd is like nothing quite else I've seen. So as we hear the story about this unnamed woman pushing through the crowd, I need to, us to think about what's it like with this crowd in the wider community that is in such need of our love today. For joy and celebration, connection and community. In the midst of all of this, there's a tremendous amount of healing that we can bear witness to. To be the children of God clothed in joy of God's unconditional love shown through the witness of our lives, our voices, our hands, and our hearts. Today's scripture lessons, both the Hebrew scripture and the gospel, speak of the healing of human suffering. The gospel passage offers us two healing stories, one of the unnamed woman with the flow of blood for 12 long years, and the other of the raising of Jairus' daughter from the dead. Now, one of the things that I love so much about the gospel healing accounts is that each healing experience where Jesus speaks to each person or people involved in each situation, there is no one healing story that is exactly alike. They're all different and specific to the situation of of those that are involved. Have you ever noticed that as you read the scriptures? I bet you have. (laughs) Remember Lazarus coming out of the tomb as he heard Jesus' voice? What did Jesus say to the community? You unbind him. Remember the story of the paralytic whose friends took him up on top of the roof and broke it open and lowered their friend down to receive Jesus' healing? Then there was the woman at the well from whom Jesus needed living water and to whom he gave living water but also needed to receive it from her as in that encounter they knew the Spirit's presence. Or the blind man that Jesus healed with spit and mud. That seems to always be a hit with the the youth and children probably the adults as well, and the list goes on. So today, this unnamed woman pushes her way through the crowd. Now pause with me a moment and put yourself in her place. Can you remember what was going on in your own life in June 2012? Can you remember all that way back before the pandemic, before all of it? Can you go back that far? Let me give you a minute to think about it. And in that time and space, say that summer, imagine that there was a physical, emotional, and spiritual ailment that was plaguing you without ceasing. Maybe some of you are experiencing that, or have, all those long 12 years. What if it was cancer, or the long arc of grief about anything? Maybe it was the pain of a breakup or a physical ailment. Maybe it's a way that somehow you experience being ostracized from community or without economic means or in need of a restart. Twelve long years or longer. Here in our gospel story, this unnamed woman summons all of her courage to somehow push through the crowd as she reached out to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. And how does he respond to her? Remember, it's unique to every healing situation. He says, who touched my clothes? And the verb in Greek actually says that he glared at her. (laughs) Now, when you think about a glaring facial expression, it's not typically this kind of serene and kind and joyful face of Jesus that we typically imagine when we think of him or see him depicted in art, most likely as a white person, which we know wasn't the case. No, Jesus glared at her. And at some point in this encounter, the look of Jesus' face must have changed entirely. And what I imagine is that the tone of his voice softened, and I imagine that a smile came across his cheeks as he says, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Be free of your suffering. Now, we don't know the rest of her story, but I do believe we have this image of this woman restored in her body, her soul, her spirit. And our Jesus who blesses her and says, your faith has made you well. Now, the thing about healing is it's so important to remember and remind each other, remind ourselves, that God will stop at nothing 
to heal us. God is always reaching out to us in love. It's the prevenient grace of God, as we say in the Wesleyan tradition. You've probably heard a lot about that from your former pastors, and we'll continue to come back to that in our tradition over and over again. It's the grace of God that's active and moving in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit before we're even cognitively aware of it. We see this in Jesus' ministry and the vast array of different healing stories and the sharing of God's healing power across the gospel. The other healing story, of course, we have is the story of the raising of Jairus' daughter and a smaller group of disciples that assisted in that healing as well. Now, I'm going to put that one aside for a little bit. We're going to take a deeper dive on that another time in the interest of time. But what I love is if we go back to the psalm and this account of the unnamed woman, there's healing happening in both directions. And by that, what I mean is that this unnamed woman, our heroine of the story, she does her part to push through the crowd to attend to her own healing and summoning all her bravery and fortitude possible. And God does God's part through the ministry of Jesus and hears her cry and turns her mourning into dancing, as the psalmist speaks of as well. It's what God always does, even before we're aware of it. God transforms our sackcloths of grief, and sometimes it takes a really long time, into garments of restoration, wholeness, peace, and joy. And friends, when it comes to the ministries of healing, every single one of us who comes into community is in need of some kind of healing. Maybe not this very day, maybe so this very day, but at different points throughout our lives, we will be the ones that are called to be the healers or the ones in need of healing, because that's part of what it simply means to be alive. And the church's job is to provide, to quote our newly retired district superintendent, Cynthia Williams, the church's job is to provide a safe space for people to do their inner work in order to be about the work of healing each in our own lives for the benefit of all and the glory of God. And she would remind me about this work of healing and transformation of growth. She would say to me, Max, you were doing that at Champlain. You can see and feel the energy and momentum. And we saw people grow and change and become even more of the people God made them to be in those seven years together, a, a big portion of which was physically apart, just like it was here. And I know because it happened in my own life too. And I know that good Sam's call is to do the same, to be that safe harbor, which is so much a part of the history of this congregation, where people are welcomed unconditionally and exactly as who they are, to do their own inner work with the assistance of the Spirit as we continually learn what it means to follow Jesus together and to hear Jesus saying to each of us, you are my beloved child. Your face has healed you. Go in peace. So friends, I am delighted to be here. God's Spirit has brought us together for just such a time as this. And as we, we start this ministry together, I, I want to close with a story of my first time here at Good Samaritan, actually, which was, um, interestingly, several years ago. So back in 2005, I was the pastor of Edgewater Emanuel Church by Lake Nokomis in South Minneapolis. And this church invited us and the North UMC to come and be part of their vacation Bible school, your vacation Bible school here. And it was a sports theme that year. Uh, it was very fun. And on my day to volunteer, I showed up and the staff looked at me and said, oh, Pastor Max, it's, we're so glad you're here. We're gonna need you to be in the cheerleading group. And this is not what I had expected upon arriving at Good Samaritan that I would be learning uh, cheerleading moves with these young women who called themselves the Gzettes, but that's exactly what we did. And we celebrated that together um, in front of all the young parents of every age here, and we did it, and we had a blast. So be that as it may, <laughs> all these years later, I'm now back here to be the captain of your cheer squad 
And I couldn't be more delighted because friends, we are gonna do amazing work together for the healing of the, the, the world, beginning with the depths of our own hearts. Happy pride, happy new beginning together as we serve our God, as we are clothed in joy beyond our wildest imaginations. Amen.
Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Creator of all things, we come to you as relatives and neighbors to all people. Just as you heard the cries of your people when they were in exile, hear us in this moment. We pray for restoration and healing of all people. We pray for the people who have been harmed in your name, for their identities, for who they love, for the color of their skin, or for the ways in which they worship you. Open our eyes to the ways our inactions and inactions have harmed others, and give us the courage to bring change to systems that hurt people. Be with those who mourn, those who've lost loved ones to illness or accident, violence or hunger around the world, and those who mourn life changes and lost relationships. Bring your healing presence to those living in fear, living in places of war, those who are displaced, and for those who come to our southern border in the hopes of a better life. Be with those who are homeless. And be with those who are struggling with the devastating effects of climate change. May we continue the work of healing a divided world and bringing your kingdom of justice to all of your creation. May we work to restore wholeness and beauty to your creations and your createds. May we see our shared humanity and your image in the other. Yahweh, who hears our cries, who tends our wounds, who lifts us from the pit, who calls us to unbind each other. May we feel your presence in our times of stress. May we feel your strength when we are tired. May we feel your peace when we are afraid. May we feel your healing when life hurts. And may we feel joy when there are things to celebrate. May we have the courage to trust and reach out for you in our times of suffering. May we be the ones others reach out to when they need healing. Help us recognize that even when there is no cure, there is always, always room for healing. May we honor the healing stories of Jesus and the healing stories that happen each and every day in our lives and in the lives of our neighbors. May we continue to live these stories of healing through your Holy Spirit. Creator, we bring all of these intentions to you as we pray the prayer our sibling Jesus taught us as interpreted by Parker Palmer. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, holy and blessed is your true name. We pray for your reign of peace to come. We pray your good will be done. Let heaven and earth become one. Give us this day the bread we need. Give it to those who have none. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us. From each one to each one. Lead us to holy innocence beyond the evil of our days. Come swiftly, mother, father, parent, Come, 
for yours is the power and the glory and the mercy forever your name is all in one amen Before we close, my friends, I have a couple of announcements. You can find out more about these events and others by going to our website, good.org, and clicking directly on News and Events. The Staff Parish Relations Committee invites you to a meet and greet event with our new pastor, Max. There are several options for different days and locations at host members' homes. Day and evening times are available. Each 90-minute event has a host and address listed, so sign up for what works for you. Light refreshments will be served. See your options and sign up at the address on your screen, or you can look on our news and events page on good.org, or contact Cindy Bergstrom in the church office at 952-929-0049, or cindy at good.org if you have any questions. Good Sam will once again participate in the Edina 4th of July parade. We need 17 to 20 people willing to show off the Good Sam spirit at the parade. We really need some people to sign up for this. So if you are local and are going to be here on the 4th of July, please consider this. The parade route is, is less than a mile and is mostly shaded. If you can participate, please sign up at the address on your screen or at news and events on our website you can find the link there as well or reach out to me christian at good.org and i'll get you in touch with our organizers dave knutson and brian boyson before we send you back out into the world this intentionally created online worship service offers a safe and personal space for those who may be unable to attend a church due to physical limitations for those who may not feel safe and their local faith community due to their identity. For those who may be traveling or have schedules that make showing up to an in-person worship on Sunday very difficult. And for those who may simply come across our worship in their feed, who might not otherwise ever set foot inside a brick and mortar church. If you are in a place to financially support Ministries of Good Samaritan, like our online worship service, please visit good.org. Click on Give and select Give a Gift from the drop-down menu. Or you can send a check to 5730 Grove Street, Edina, Minnesota, 55436. Thank you for your support and generosity. And as we close worship today, I want to share with you words that have been floating around my head since I recorded Max's sermon. It's the hymn, Light Dawns on a Weary World. It's the refrain written by Mary Louise Bringle and inspired by the prophet Isaiah. The trees shall clap their hands. The dry lands gush with springs. The hills and mountains shall break forth with singing. We shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace. As all the world and wonder echoes, shalom. Peace be with you, my friends. Amen. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin. Sometimes I feel discouraged 
and think my works in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a bomb in Gilead Make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Don't ever feel discouraged for Jesus is. Your friend, and if you look for knowledge, he'll never refuse to let. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the If you can preach like Peter, if you can't pray like Paul, just tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb